Hi, this is Pastor Bob. You know, I'm really enjoying teaching on God's heart for giving the new book I have. In fact, I'm just doing one a week. These are just small nuggets, small thoughts, small teachings, not doctrines, not laying out entire scriptures, because I think the most important thing is people don't need to get a shove to give. They just need a nudge. They need something from the Word of God to remind them. And uh, for those who support this broadcast, support me, thank you so much. In fact, we have those that fit into this category today that willingness comes from inside of you. You shouldn't have to be prompted to be willing to give. And oftentimes when we come to church, again, a scripture is all we need just to prompt us. We don't need somebody to, you know, to over push and, and be bear, overbearing on it. This is what we need is a simple nudge from the word of God. Willingness comes from inside of you. Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 8. I want to take a look at verses 3 and 4. Paul speaking here about the willingness of the people of Macedonia to give to him when he was having to make tents when he was, he ran out of money and, and I was there to preach the gospel, but he refused to take offerings from unbelievers. He would not do that. He waited till they got to be believers, knew what they were doing so they could never come back and say, you just came after our money only. So Paul made tents. But during that time, God spoke to the Macedonians, to the church of Philippi, and they, they took an offering supernaturally. They heard from the Holy Spirit, but they had to have a willing heart, first of all, because they loved Paul. They loved people. They loved the gospel. They loved to see people get saved, and they love to see people become disciples. So they sent an offering to him, and here's what he said about them in verses 3 and 4 of 2 Corinthians chapter 8. For I bear witness that they're according to their ability, yes, and beyond their ability, they were willing of themselves, imploring us with much urgency that we'd receive the gift and the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. Notice that they were willing of themselves. They didn't need to be provoked to give. Now, when you give these nudges on Sunday, it gives because people have a tendency to forget. But you know, the best person coming to church is one who thinks about it before they ever leave the house. So think about it during the week, have their check made out, have their offering envelope made out, they bring it to church. And we have people like that that give in this ministry. It's just a thing that they do every single month and they love to do it. And they don't have to be provoked to do it. They just do it again, because they love God, they love souls, they love the word of God, and they love to see people's lives be changed. So again, what he said of the Philippians was they didn't need to be provoked to give. They didn't lose their willingness to give by the next service. They would give any time despite the circumstances. And instead of Paul convincing them to give, they actually convinced Paul to receive the offering. Why? Because Paul even tried to convince them to reconsider the size of their gift. They started giving to him. He finally said, look, that's more than what I need. And they just kept on giving and giving because they were willing to give. Sounds a lot like Moses in the Old Testament, doesn't it? I mean, the people were giving out of a willing heart to build the tabernacle. He finally said, had to stop them and say, we've got more than enough coming in. What a wonderful uh, problem that your pastor would have if people were so willing of themselves to give. He actually said, guys, this is more than what we need. But think about this. It's really never more than we need. There's always people out there that need to be ministered to. And if an abundance comes into the church, instead of heaping it on yourself, instead of increasing all the salaries of the of the staff, um, unless they really, really need it, I mean, the point comes back to there's missionaries out there that need this. There's, there's orphanages out there. There's feeding programs. There's, there's people that go out there and help rescue people in the midst of tragedies where, where, you know, earthquakes come and, and we have storms and, and hurricanes and people's lives are at stake. That's what we're giving into. Again, a love for God and a love for people. So they came to church willing. Although it's good, it shouldn't be necessary for the pastor to give a teaching on the importance of giving. You should be willing of yourself and come to church prepared to give. But there's always those who don't. They give because they might be prompted to give. They give and by next week, their, their own needs look so big that they're trying to put giving on the back shelf and have to be prompted again. This is eternal things. Food on your table is temporary. We need food for the table. We need to pay our bills, but that's temporary. Electricity is temporary. Why? Because when we go to heaven, we won't need it anymore. But whatever we sow into the kingdom of God becomes eternal. God takes temporary money and gives eternal results out of it. The Philippians had to be constrained to quit giving. God has always searched for willing people to give into his work. The Philippians were as great a testimony of willingness of heart to give in the New Testament at the, as the wilderness generation was a testimony of willingness in the Old Testament to give toward the building of the tabernacle. The generosity shown to Paul was a reflection of the generosity of those in the Old Testament shown to Moses at the time when it came to the building of the tabernacle. When the tabernacle was built in the wilderness, God told Moses to look for those of a willing heart. 
Exodus chapter 35, verses 5 and 22. Notice this, look for willing people. The rest can be made willing, but find those, first of all, they're going to give that already have a willing heart. So much was given by the people. Paul, like Moses, had asked them to hold back their giving because more than enough had come in to accomplish the work of God. I simply come back to this again. What a wonderful thing a pastor would have if people love giving that much, that no matter what need came along, no matter what missionary came along, no matter what work in some foreign country came along, or work that was in the inner city right there where your church is to get people saved, bring them back into fellowship with God if they are saved, empower them for witnessing, make disciples out of them, that would be a wonderful problem for your pastor to have. Thank you for tuning in today. To order, visit our website at bobyandian.com.